English texts. Remember, when you're writing an essay, you're not just supposed to identify the technique. You also need to explain how it helps convey the author's overall message. To help you do this, use the Peel method. Remembering the word Peel will help you write great paragraphs that explain what an author is saying and how it is conveyed. Think about it just like peeling a banana. Each new sentence should help you get deeper into your argument, just like peeling off the banana skin takes you straight to the flesh of the fruit. Some people like to remember good paragraph structure using other words like petal or teal. All these words are just different ways of remembering the same essential argument structure, so for now, we'll just unpack the peel method. P stands for point. What is the main point that you want to explain in your paragraph? For example, you might write that the boy who cried wolf conveys the dangers of dishonesty. You've just summarised a big message from the story. Next, E stands for evidence. You want to provide some evidence for the point that you've just made. Try to find an example from your text that proves your argument and identify the technique used in your example. You might say, for example, in a gruesome metaphor, the boy is eaten by the wolf after no one believes his cries anymore. You found a quote and a technique that are good evidence for your main point, that lying has terrible consequences. The next E stands for explanation. You need to explain the evidence that you've just given. You can't just identify a technique, you need to unpack how exactly it proves your point. Let's try explaining that metaphor a little more. The boy's violent death represents the dangerous consequences of lying, since no one believed him when he really needed help. Finally, L stands for link. Use the last sentence of your paragraph to link your evidence back to the main point of your paragraph or essay. For example, Therefore, through exploring the violent consequences of the boy's false cries of wolf, the story highlights the risks of lying. Notice how the last sentence of your paragraph matches back with the main point that you made in the first sentence? Like we mentioned earlier, You might come across other paragraph methods. Petal stands for point, evidence, technique, analysis, and link. Teal, which stands for topic sentence, evidence, analysis, and link. All these words are different ways of remembering the same essential paragraph structure, where you state your idea and explain evidence to prove your point. Let's walk through a couple more examples of how you might use Peel to analyse some of the techniques we learnt in English Basics Lesson 1. One thing to keep in mind before we get started is that Peel is a great method for writing small, short answer responses, but when it comes to writing really long, extended response-style essays, we need to change our approach a little. Usually when we write an essay, we have three main points and spend a paragraph on each of them. Now, if we just used a normal Peel analysis with one example in each paragraph, our paragraphs would be very short. To fix that, and to make our essay responses more detailed, we try and include between three and four examples in each paragraph. How does that work? Well, we stretch out our Peel structure to add a few more evidence and explanation blocks to support our main point. In other words, your paragraph will look something like this, where each new evidence and explanation block will help you to prove your overarching point for that paragraph. Thinking back to our example from The Boy Who Cried Wolf, our main point was that lying has some pretty nasty consequences. We used an evidence and explanation block to prove how the boy suffered a personal consequence for his behaviour, He was eaten. We might also like to include an example which proves that he was lying in the first place to set up our example about personal consequences. We could even add another example afterwards. 
talking about the consequences for the community and not just the boy. After the boy is eaten, the flock scatters and the villagers lose all their sheep. The boy's lying has negatively impacted the whole community. Also, did you notice how every example proved a different aspect of our point? We didn't have three different techniques just to show that the boy was eaten and therefore suffered a consequence. Instead, we had one example to show that he was lying, a second to show his personal consequences, and a third and final example to show the consequences of lying for the community. All of these examples combined to prove our point about the dangers of dishonesty. As a final note, see how examples are logically progressive. We started at the beginning to prove that the boy was dishonest, and then we moved on to talk about the dangers of this dishonest behaviour. Imagine if we tried to prove the consequences of lying before we even proved that the boy was lying in the first place. Your paragraph should be like a recipe. Start with the essential ingredients and work your way down. You can't put the icing on before you've baked the cake. So that's how we build upon our basic peel structure and begin writing full-length essays. To recap, in each paragraph, we stretch out our peel analysis to include three to four example and explanation blocks. We ensure each example proves a different aspect of our point, and we order our examples in a logically progressive way. Now let's jump back into some analysis. In lesson one, the first technique that we looked at was the metaphor, with the example, our new dog is a fountain of joy. Let's try analysing this example in a peel paragraph. Our point could be that the author captures the persona's happiness at receiving a new dog. The persona is how we describe the subject of the extract because we can't tell from that quote alone who is actually receiving this new dog. Next, we'd include some evidence. The author uses a metaphor to describe the dog as a fountain of joy. Now, we have to explain our evidence. This metaphor creates a more emotive picture of the puppy as a fountain, pouring out joy, conveying the overflowing sense of happiness that our persona gains from this new dog. Finally, we have to remember to link our explanation back to our original point. Thus, through the metaphor, our author is able to capture the incredible, overflowing joy that our canine companion brings to the persona. Let's pick up the pace as we move on to our next technique, the simile. For our example, we'll say that the boy was as strong as a lion. First, our point. The author highlights the boy's strength. Next, our evidence. This is captured in the simile as strong as a lion, which emphasises his power. Explanation comes next. Creating a comparison exaggerates the almost inhuman strength of the boy, comparing him to a lion, a creature well known for its raw physical prowess. Finally our link. Hence, through the author's use of simile, the audience's attention is drawn towards the boy's incredible strength. All right, we're starting to get the hang of peel analyses. Take a look at how we might analyse the hyperbole from lesson one. It's freezing outside. The writer emphasises the cold weather. He achieves this through using hyperbole, claiming, it's freezing outside. This hyperbole exaggerates the temperature to give readers a strong image of his visceral, that is, bodily, reaction to the cold. Therefore, our writer has used hyperbole to highlight the extreme weather conditions that he is experiencing. Moving on to personification, our example was, the leaves on the trees were dancing. The author revels in the beauty of the natural landscape. He invigorates his portrayal of the world around him through personification, 
the leaves on the trees were dancing. Personification, in this instance, is used to associate the movement of the leaves with that of a majestic dance, capturing the smooth, flowing beauty of the leaves. Thus, our author paints a graceful living image of the leaves' sublime beauty. Let's take a look at symbolism next. Remember how snakes were used as a symbol of evil in Harry Potter? In Harry Potter, J.K. Rowling characterises the house of Slytherin as evil. Rowling uses symbolism, including a snake in Slytherin's badge. Snakes are a common symbol of evil and cunning, adding insidious undertones to audiences' perception of the house. Symbolism is therefore core to Rowling's depiction of Slytherin, foreshadowing their devious intentions. As a final example, we'll look at how to apply appeal analysis to motifs. This time, we are going to put all of our sentences together to show you what a complete paragraph would look like. In Batman, the director highlights Gotham's state of disrepair. The director uses the motif of the bat signal, which reappears increasingly frequently throughout the film. This motif emphasises Gotham's mounting crime problem, continually reminding audiences of Gotham's social degradation every time that the city is forced to call upon Batman. Thus, the director has cleverly incorporated a motif to develop the persistence of criminality in Gotham. Did you catch all that? The first sentence was the point. The second was our evidence. In our third, we explained this evidence before finally wrapping up our paragraph in a final linking sentence. Using Peel is easy once you get the hang of it. Have a go writing a quick paragraph now. You could write about an example that we've covered in English Basics Lesson 1 like the symbol of the wolf in Little Red Riding Hood or the motif of Harry Potter's scar. Way to go! Now you're ready to wow your teachers with great paragraphs analysing any text that comes your way. We hope you enjoyed this Schooling Online production. For more easy lessons on Stage 4 English Essentials, check out our analysis of Perfecting Poetry 